Right, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we are indeed going to be doing exactly what the video title suggests and looking at a HDMI port that was soldered by an idiot and why was it soldered by an idiot? Well we're going to show you so let's just walk this in because that's the view of the HDMI circuit everything looks alright there doesn't it? We do have that missing protection diode there which everybody seems to knock off and then, oh, doesn't that look nice? Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? So as we can see, I have a few problems here. Those two are bridged, and those two are bridged, and those two are bridged. But the most interesting one is this pin here, which actually isn't a pin at all, because it's been snapped off. Yep, so that was obviously a really good soldering job. Now then, all right. There's nothing wrong with having a go yourself. Absolutely nothing wrong with having a go yourself. And you're probably thinking, that's a bit harsh calling them an idiot. They've had a go. Yeah, but the problem is, this wasn't done by average Joe. This was done by somebody, once again, in the UK. It's been sent in to, for a second opinion. And really all they needed to do was inspect their bloody work. Anyway, so let's have a look. Underneath. Underneath. Just zoom it out. Zoom, zoom it out. Go the other way. So the ground pins. Yeah, don't look particularly great. Look a bit dry, as you can see. Not the best quality joints in the world. Looks a bit. Looks a bit nasty. Plenty of flux residue marks over the top of the HDMI shield. Not entirely sure how they've done that. But there you go. The port itself looks a bit manky in the middle. I don't think I can really show you that by the, the scope camera, but it don't look too pretty. It don't look too pretty. So what have we got to do? Well, first job is... In fact, is that... <laughs> right, another problem as well. Because not only is it missing that protection diode, it's also missing that little 2K resistor there as well. So without that, you're getting no picture regardless of how well your HDMI port is soldered onto it and as we can see our HDMI port is soldered like so we are going to have to drop this port off and we're going to have to replace that little protection diode we are going to have to resolder that 2k resistor there and then hopefully this thing is going to work so because the port well the port looks like crap anyway but because it's got that broken pin we're going to end up replacing it as it is and then we are going to have to find a donor board to grab those two bits and pieces off and then once we've done that, hopefully we're going to get something like a working PlayStation. So, uh, join me in a second, boys and girls, when we, uh, when we get this uh, all set up. And we'll have a look, and uh, hopefully we'll get this thing working again. Right, okay, so the more you look at this board, the worse it gets. So we've just been trying to get a closer look at the, the job in hand, if you like. So what's that there? So that's the ground pin for the Ethernet port. So you've got one at the other side there, which is how it should look. And then you've got that one. Yeah. Somebody's been heating top side of this uh, this port by hot air. So they've tried to reflow it into positions using hot air, I think. Which isn't particularly ideal, which is probably how those there are missing. But we're just trying to get a closer look at these these pins. And it ain't a pretty sight. Let's see how close in we can get. pretty close isn't it so let's have a look at the far side yep so those are definitely bridged you can see that the actual pins themselves look awful so they all look oxidized and nasty that one there that one there is our missing pin and we just keep going along and as you can see it just generally well, it gets worse and then those are the the first four pins there which are nasty. So we are going to drop this uh, this port out now. We are going to drop it out. So bear with me, boys and girls. And uh, we'll see if we can't replace this port and get this machine working. All right then. Okay, so we're going to replace this port and we're going to drop it off. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a bit of flux to the back. So you can go quite liberal with it, to be fair, because... It's all going to get cleaned off in the end anyway. 
And then you've got the two ground, <coughs> two ground, the four ground pins here. So stick a little bit on that two. Right. So the first thing we do is anybody should know who watches this by now. What we're going to do is we are going to get our big soldering iron tip. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work this solder into the holes. So it's been replaced. It looks to be leaded stuff. It's flowing quite easily. So what this should do is just dilute the crap in the lead free and of course we're working a little bit of heat into the board now gives us a head start when we get with there with the hot air which means we don't have to whack as much hot air in there the uh, the board and the ground planes are going to try and absorb this heat so the more we can just work into the joints now the less hard work we'll have to do with the hot air so that should be okay there now so what we're going to do is we're just going to get our hot air station So we're at 485 degrees C, 100 litres of airflow per minute. And we're just going to work these joints back and forth. Now then. If these were indeed lead-free joints, getting a lot of crap off that, I would have expected those to have started looking a little bit shiny, but they're not. So, that leads me to believe that somebody's tried to reinstall this port with lead-free crap. On top of the lead-free crap we've already got in there, which is just going to make my life a living hell. So, we are just going to add some proper leaded stuff to it now. We'll go in there with a, a little bit more flux too. So I'm just going to work it back and forth. Don't mind if you've got a little bit of excess in there, don't worry about that. So we'll go again, we'll add a drop more flux to it. You can see rather than going on as a pace now, the board's warm, it actually goes to more of a, a liquid state once we add it to the board. Gonna get our fume extraction a little bit closer because there was a lot of crap coming off that stuff. And try again. See now they are going shiny a little bit quicker than, than what they were. So we're just going to work back and forth across the port. So the first thing you need to do is just loosen the ground pins. Because of course this port's got to come out. And it's not particularly well soldered in, let's face it. So it shouldn't take much to actually drop out the other side either. It's already starting to, to move out front end first. So we're just going to keep working this. As you can see, we are out one side completely now. There's a lot of crap coming off this stuff, it's horrible. Hey, remember boys and girls that lead free is good for the environment, just not your lungs. So, it looks to be out, there we go. What a bloody horrible thing that was. Uh, we've got our port out now, bridges and all. You can actually see the pin, you can actually see the pin there that was missing is actually pushed out. So it's pushed out into the back comb of the of the port, so it's just not been particularly well installed there. So not a great job, it has to be said. So we'll just turn this over. And we'll just check what state our our board pins are at. So 
guys, we're just going to start the, the microscope camera again. into position in a sec. Okay, so those are our pads there for our HDMI port. Luckily they're all intact. We haven't got any that are missing. So we're just going to clean those up. And we do that by adding a drop of flux to the header. And then... I'm going to change the soldering iron tip to a slightly finer point. Now then, you can, if you want clean that off but we're just going to add some new stuff over the top should be fine otherwise might need a drop more flux on there probably are going to need a drop more flux on there just to encourage it to flow and settle nicely on the pads any contaminants are going to come off onto the iron and then we can clean the iron tip to the theory. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, a fairly harsh light on, on that header. So they all do look a little bit too shiny. There we go. So those are tinned, those are ready to accept a new port now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a tiny little bit more flux. So we're going to make sure that the ground holes here are covered too. Okay, there was it up. And then what we're going to do is just going to move the microscope back out of the way. And we're going to come back in with our main camera. Try anyway. This this could be awkward actually, but let's see how we go. The tripod's not brilliant, so this this is going to be awkward because I'm going to have to try and do this down a viewfinder of a camera. But hopefully you'll get the idea. So we just need a HDMI port, which we'll just get in a sec. Nice new shiny one. All in the packet. There we go. So we're just going to get this out of there. Okay, and then we're just going to adjust this. So, as per, we're just going to bend the legs out, left and right hand side to the right. We're just going to move them over. We're just going to deflect them over by about the same width as the leg. What the hell? Okie dokie, so we're just going to install that now. This could be interesting down the viewfinder of a camera, but we're going to have a go. So, just going to start working back and forth. So remember the board's already got a little bit of heat in there. And we're just waiting for the solder in the uh, in the ground holes to go shiny. Just going to keep working the, uh, the air one back and forth. I'm 
got our port here, so we're going to offer that up in a sec. We just want to make sure that it's holding our holes are liquidous. This tripod's going to get in my way a little bit. Once we think we're there, just going to drop in, hold it square. There we go. That's it. So, we're just going to check the alignment on that. Let's have a look at what we've got now. They're a little bit better lined up, aren't they? So, they already look fairly well soldered, to be fair, but they're not. So, what we're going to do, we're just going to add a bit of flux. Remember, we've already got our pads tinned so we can just add some flux to the back so again you know you can be fairly liberal with it make sure <coughs> soldering iron tip is nice and clean get some fume extraction in place just in case we get any crap off here and then we're just going to push down on each pin just to make sure those are all in place and then we're just going to drag up and across each leg Squirt of alcohol at the back, get the brush. Bit of rubbish stuck to the comb there. <laughs> so we've got that off. I'm just going to get the end of a clean Q tip, cotton bud, call it what you like. So, that's that. Those are all soldered in place now. As you can see, they're not bridged. So what we did there, because of course our uh, pads on the main board were already tinned, we didn't have to add any additional solders to the legs. We just added a bit of flux and then warped the, uh, the soldering iron up the length of each leg. And basically what that's called is drag soldering. So we don't have to add any new solder, but the flux and the heat from the iron encourage the solder to follow the heat, the path of the heat, up onto the legs of the uh, of the port. And there you go, you can see you get a rather nice uniform looking set of connections. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give each one here the, the push test. So... going to make sure each one of these is soldered. Got one there that isn't, two there that aren't, three there, oh bloody hell. Right. <laughs> had a nightmare there. We've had a nightmare there. Try that again. What can happen sometimes is if the pins are sla slightly proud, then when you walk across them they can lift up slightly. So what you should do is always just go back and press them down to the board. There you 
go. Should be fine. I'll just check. But that's why you check your work. Because if you don't. Team. There you go. So they're all done now, all soldered, all in place. Just gonna give that another squirt at the back there. Give it another rub. And then all that's left to do is just go over the uh, the ground pins on the bottom side of the board. So just add a little bit more solder to the holes. Make sure those holes are nice and full. And then we are done. So we can pop the thing back together, give it a test, and hopefully have a working PlayStation. I can't remember the last time I soldered a port like that. Must be catching. Idiot disease. Off this board. But there we go. So, got to do the ground pins now. Pop it back in the board. Or the, pop the board back in the chassis even. Plug it in and see if it works. Alright, you can tell it's been a long old day. And the sense of a stupid emanating from this board really has got to me. Because I nearly forgot to replace those two... Uh, components so we have that protection diode there which is the black one at the front that one's back in and we've also replaced that little 2k resistor there directly behind it so we're going to pop this back together now and this time we'll see if it works hopefully it will and then we should be good to go right okay ladies and gentlemen so we've still got an issue with our hdmi circuit so first thing we're going to check here is the coils so these are emi filters these just filter out like, ripple and interference and everything else from the digital signal coming out of the encoder IC and then basically so it comes out the encoder IC which is here comes down these twin sets of uh, traces there into each filter there's two pins on each side and they come straight across so they're essentially just big coils of wire and then through these holes here these are the vias which basically take the signal up through to the board to the other side where there's a matching set of vias and then out to the HDMI port so essentially each side of these coils should read true across so they should read continuity but they shouldn't read to the neighbouring pin so for example let's see if we can do this so we get that there so for the first pin we get a beep and the multimeter reads 3.3 ohms second side so bearing in mind the first the right so the left side shouldn't read which it doesn't it shows open line which is correct but the right hand side should read continuity and it does it's just 1.6 ohms which is as near as damn it so moving on to the second one so the left hand side Try that again. Yep, 1.1 ohms, so that's just about right. The right hand side shouldn't read anything. So that's the left. The right hand side should not read anything. And it does. In our case here, we're getting 71.5, 69.1 ohms. That's not right. The right hand side is reading 1.6 which is correct so it shouldn't read anything left to right it shouldn't read anything the fact we are getting a reading across shows us either our encoder IC is bad or our filter itself is bad so let's check the third one so we should have continuity there we do 1.6 ohms so the right hand side we get open line nothing there which is good the right hand side 1.2 ohms which is as near as damn it to zero that's good so fourth filter in left hand side should read you can also say 44 ohms that's not correct we don't read anything across and our right hand side here is actually reading nothing at all oh yes it is it's a bit of crap on there 1.4 ohms that's fine just read it back to the left hand side where we should be getting zero oh well, sorry no where we should be getting infinite open line 
and we're getting 64 ohms. So we may have an issue with this filter and this filter. And let's face it, they don't look particularly nice. They look, they all look a little bit a little bit dog-eared, I think it's probably fair to say. So Let's just have a let's just have a tiny look at what's going on here. So I'm just gonna remove They look like ass, they're half melted. To be honest, it is flux residue on the top, so if it looks like they're melting, don't be too alarmed. So it was that one there and that one and that one. Okie dokie. So we've removed those two questionable filters. So the question is, is do our pins on our encoder IC now still read funny? Because if we are still getting continuity, albeit low resistance, but if we are getting some resistance between pins there, that's not right. That's not good. So, let's just take a, another look there. So this is the left-hand side. So, you'll notice here that there's actually no connection at all between the pads top and bottom. The actual connection is done via the coil inside the filter. So you're going to have to read it from the top. So, let's do that. So, top left. getting 1.7 ohms to the right hand side we're getting nothing at all which is good so we'll just double check that the right hand side we are getting continuity we're getting 1 ohm to the left hand side we're getting open line nothing at all which is good so the right hand one so we ha definitely have a bad filter there on the left hand side let's just get rid of some of this crap Okay, so right hand edge, left hand pin, 1.2 ohms dropping down to an ohm, that's fine, that's good. Um, we'll measure the same there on the right hand side, we get an open line, which is cool, right hand side. Not 0.9 ohms, back to the left, reading open line. So we're getting no reading. So we had definitely had those two bad filters there. We definitely had two bad filters. So we are going to want to replace those, which is fine. So we're just going to give that a bit of a clean off, because, you know, some of that stuff is fairly rank to say the least. Like I say, you can see the sort of, like, stuff on top of the the coils there. It looks like they're melted but actually they're not. It's just flux residue. Now then, I don't know what flux the uh, the previous lot have used but it seems to be all over this board and it's actually gone down and run. I mean, don't be, don't get me wrong, right? Okay, there's nothing wrong with using a lot of flux, okay? You can... It's a little bit wasteful but it doesn't do anything, you know, it's not of any detriment at all to what you do as long as you clean it off properly afterwards. If you don't, then it just leaves a mess and even over time even the no clean stuff can get corrosive so it's not a good idea to leave it but as you can see it's run all the way down <laughs> behind the the IC so we are going to have to clean that off before this goes back either way but we are going to want to replace those two those two filters so we're just going to replace those now and then we'll come back and we'll retest the readings and we'll make sure everything's still good. If it is, we'll plug it back in and we'll test it again. Right, okay, so we've replaced those coils now. I would do it on camera, but there's not a lot of room under the scope, unfortunately, to do that. So, so we've done that off camera now, so those are replaced. So we're just going to go over those filters again, the two we've replaced. So the, the two that we've replaced is the second one in from the left and the one on the far right. So we're just going to measure those readings again. So if you remember, we were getting cross-torque from, from each side. So each side, if you 
Basically, if you imagine, right, you've got a left-hand side of the coil and a right-hand side, and the left should not talk to the right and vice versa. If it does, then you've got an issue. So it should say, it should say open line. If it doesn't, then you have an issue. So what we did is we removed the EMI filters, which we thought we had a problem with, and then we re-measured the points at the top back to the encoder IC to make sure that the encoder IC pins weren't the ones talking across. Because if they were, and they shouldn't remember, but if they do, then that would have showed us that actually it wasn't our filters that were faulty, it was actually our encoder IC. But, from the outset at least, at the moment, it looks like the one we've got an issue with are the EMI filters. Because of course, once we lifted these EMI filters and we measured point to point, left and right on the top side of each of these EMI filters, we actually got the proper reading that we were expecting. So, the the actual interfere, the actual crosstalk isn't appearing here on the pins. It isn't actually part of this chip being faulty. The crosstalk is actually because the coils in in these EMI filters had actually gone bad and had actually partially shorted out to each other. So let's just have a, a quick butcher's hook now. At what we're we getting here. So we're talking on the left hand side. So we are getting 1.8 ohms, which is near as damn it to zero. On the right hand side, we're now getting open line. We move to the right hand side there. And we're getting. One ohm. Yep, perfect. And on this right hand side, remember. So, going to the left. We read across. Go to the right. We're getting open line. To the right hand side, reading continuity 1.3 ohms and dropping. And back to the left, and we should get open line. And we do, so we don't get any reading at all on the meter. Oh well, open line, which basically means there is absolutely no uh, communication between these two pins, which is good. So, what we'll do is we will pop this back together now and see if replacing those two EMI filters has actually done the trick. So, uh, pop the board back in the chassis, give it a try, and uh, join me in a sec, we'll see if it works. Right, okay then ladies and gentlemen, so, uh, we've replaced those coils, and <laughs> whilst it's progress, it's not perfect. So, you can see we have a white light, if we have a look here on the monitor, we get the occasional, the occasional flash, as you can see, you just caught it there, there you go. So you get an occasional flash, and you can see that the red light is actually lit and staying lit, which means that the monitor can actually see a signal, and it's actually synced, but obviously the output is... yeah, it's not quite what we want, is it? So it's flashing away. So the fact that our coils there were quite badly damaged, because, to be honest, I've, I've not seen many cases where the actual coils themselves are talking across each side, which would lead me to suggest that the the encoder I see on this board may have had a bit of a whack. So it may have had a power surge from the TV, which could you know it could have been lightning. It could have been, you know anything like that. Uh, obviously, the first set of guys have just replaced the HDMI port, albeit badly. That could have also damaged um, the encoder I see uh, at the same time as well. Uh, but what can you do? So what we're going to do first thing is we're going to replace the encoder IC with an own good working unit and then we're going to see what we can get. So we've got progress, we've got a signal, we can see it's synced uh, albeit it's just a flashing white light every now and again and <laughs> yep it's not our 1080p glorious um, OS system menu staring us back in the face at the moment. It's uh, yeah so but anyway one step at a time We've got something, so uh, we'll replace that encoder IC, and hopefully then, hopefully then we'll have it. So uh, join me back in a sec, guys, when we've done that, and uh, we'll see what we can see. All right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we've replaced the encoder IC, as we said we were going to do, and you just caught the back end of it there, going through the system storage update check. And it's going to reboot now, so we've got a pulsing blue light on the console itself. See if we can get an image of that. There you go, so you can see that's pulsing away. And we have a PlayStation logo on our display. 
So, it would appear that we had several issues on that machine. <laughs> oh good, there we go. So our PlayStation wasn't turned off properly. Well, there's a surprise. But, as we can see there now, that's all working rather nicely, and we do indeed have an image on our display. So what did we have to do there? Well, it was a bit tricky, and I'm being pushed for time, so I couldn't quite film every step in the process, but we'll go through what we did. So, of course, originally we were having an issue with this PlayStation because we couldn't actually get an image on our display, and we had a white light. Okay? So we took a look, and the first thing that jumped out at us was the HDMI port looked like hell and indeed had the first four pins on the left uh, bridged and we also had the two pins on the far right hand side which indeed was older bridged so what we did is we actually removed that old port and we reinstalled a new port okay from there we still had an issue of white light so from that point on what do we do well the most common place to look from that point on is the encoder IC because the encoder IC is the first part of the circuit which sits directly behind the HDMI port and is particularly susceptible to things like surges from TVs and indeed lightning strikes and things like that now the thing is with cheaper TVs is the ones that I tend to find blow them more often um, I have had um, you know my consoles plugged into uh, it was a Samsung Series 8 uh, LED panel and my current Panasonic 4K unit and I've never had a problem. Uh, likewise, these LG Touch 10-point uh, touch monitors that I have here uh, are never given me a problem with them. But sort of, you know, people, when you tend to speak to them, you know, what sort of TV, it usually tends to be like supermarket home brands, one on low. I'm not sort of saying that's always the case, but more often than not, it's sort of like cheaper, generic off-brand TVs that, that tend to give more of an issue with with blowing these things than, than others. The other ones are sort of like powered HDMI switches and things like that, you know, cheap, sort of Chinese, one on low, again, generic, you know, they're you know, just a bit nasty, or they can be a little bit nasty. Not not all cases, but, but, but in some. So, what we actually did there was we, the first thing we do is measure the EMI filters, because the EMI filters are the first point in that HDMI encoder circuit behind the port. And what we actually found there was that two of those four EMI filters were actually giving us readings across the coil when in fact the left side and the right side are, are completely separate and shouldn't read any sort of resistance at all. The fact that we were actually getting some uh, resistance across the left and the right side of the coil actually means that there is some degree of interaction between the left and right sides. Now basically all the, those are are big coils of wire so they're just coils of enamel wire. If you actually lift the top cap off uh, one next time you have a duff board or something like that and just take a look you'll actually see the little coils of wire inside and uh, those those coils of wire are basically just magnet wire so whereas you've seen videos that we've done previously uh, are actually you know where we've replaced the HDMI port and we've had to run link wires to repair some some pad damage that it's the same sort of wire it's just a hell of a lot smaller gauge so it's the same sort of stuff so how do we strip that magnet wire when we're working with it well we apply heat to it with a soldering iron. So how, you know, how how has the damage occurred to these coils? Well, the fact that it's occurred on a couple of them and uh, there's flux residue underneath would lead me to believe that the chances are it's more than likely happened during the previous port replacement. I mean, you know, it wasn't a great job to begin with. I think what's happened is, is that the coils have been overheated. They've got a little bit too hot. You know, they focus too much heat underneath. You know, they've, they've maybe had the board at an angle and the heat's gone underneath. And actually what's done is it's overheated the coils and the, it's stripped the enamel white, you know, the enamel coating back and it's actually encouraged interference and it's actually shorted those two coils partially together. And that's actually caused an issue. Uh, which is in turn damaged our encoder IC. Now, chances are, um, you know, a lot of people don't actually check the port to begin with. A lot of people don't eyeball it and just check it with a meter before they replace it. The first thing they do when they get a, a machine in with a white light is just replace the port, which is monkey see, monkey do business. There's no need to replace HDMI port if it looks visually okay and intact and indeed you check it with a multimeter and each one of those pins in turn shows no continuity between its neighbors if each pin in turn checks out fine and the port looks good it probably is so you know the fact a lot of people change the ports just introduces an extra element or potential element of failure in the actual process 
So, you know, that's what's happened there. So I'm pretty sure that what's happened is, is just by careless uh, repair or attempt to repair of the machine has actually caused more damage than it probably had to begin with and has indeed caused some problems. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug the controller in. Now this one has been sent up bare bones. It's literally as you saw it on the camera there, that's the entirety that I have. So I don't have an antenna for it or anything. I probably could get one out of my spare units but you know, I'll just pop the controller on the top. So you can see there now, look, that's absolutely fine. And we're going in and we're working quite nicely. So we're happy there that we're good uh, and that we're fixed. So we've ended up replacing the port again. We've ended up changing a couple of bad EMI filters. We've ended up uh, changing out a bad encoder, I see. Yep, and that's essentially it. We've replaced that little 2K resistor and again the diode at the back of the port. Uh, and that's all working nicely. So as you can see, we have a nice 1080p picture on our display. Uh, we can see safe mode, so the lower resolutions are working too. So we're quite happy to call that a day and to, to call that fixed, ladies and gentlemen. So what we'll do is we'll strip this back down and we're going to give it a clean. Uh, but while I do that, we'll probably just walk over the board and, uh, and just show you indeed what we've done. So bear with me a sec, we'll get it back on the table. We'll show you everything and uh, that'll be us wrapped up for today. Right, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so there we go. So we've managed to uh, alleviate our issues. So like I said, we've just broken this machine down now, just to clean it. So we're just going to go over what we did. So we replaced the port initially, and we're just going to show you that in a sec. So I'll just flip the board over. So we're going to give this a, a clean down now, obviously, before it goes back. But So we replaced the port, and... We have our pins there all looking nice and shiny now. That's all cool. I actually ended up dropping another port on. Um, for somehow, the port we put on initially actually looked like a used one. Which is weird, because this is all new stock. So, God knows how the hell that happened. But uh, it didn't look too good. So we ended up re-replacing it and just putting another port on there. So as you can see there now, that's absolutely lovely. And that's all cool. So we've still, unfortunately, got this melted Ethernet port thingamajigger there, ground pin. Not a lot we can do about that. While we had the uh, the port off, we just reflowed these uh, this diode and this 2K resistor back in, so you'll notice they're now looking nice and straight. Um, so, we've gone over it a little bit on the back side here, we've cleaned it up a little bit of IPA, we've still a little bit of work to do on it, just to make sure it's properly cleaned up and everything, but, yeah, so we've got a good start there. There was a little bit of flux and stuff over this side, which we still need to completely finished getting up but otherwise should be fine so let's show you the back side of the board and just show you what we've done there just bear with me a sec while I just get this into focus for you okay so this is the bottom side of the board now so we've replaced those two EMI filters if you remember the second in from the left and the one on the far right so those are replaced now and those are all looking really rather nice and then as part of our last stage of testing when we were getting the flick of white, you know, but we had sync but no picture. So we replaced our encoder IC, which was most probably damaged at the same time as the coils were. And uh, as you can see there, that's all looking really rather nice there now. So this over here, this is an empty pad anyway on the SAB revision board, so don't worry about that. Everything else is fine. So we just need to go over here and just get rid of this flux residue. But, uh, you know, we're just going to pop this back together once that's done, and we're done. So, we replaced those two those two coils, the encoder and the HDMI port. We just touched up those ground pins as well, as I say, because we ended up re-replacing the port, because I don't know where that, that iffy one came from. Um, bit weird, I don't know, maybe... Uh, I don't know, but anyway, it's all done. So, uh, we're all good, we're working, and... Uh, ready to go back so thanks for watching boys and girls uh, as I say, I'm sorry we couldn't just go through every step of that replacing all the bits and pieces but a little bit restricted for time today but uh, hopefully you've learned something there what with measuring the coils and you know just checking those because that can point either to the issue itself if your port's looking good and everything else seems okay and it can also point towards further damage of course to your encoder I see up there so thanks for watching I hope you've I hope you've learned something and uh, please remember to comment rate 
like and subscribe to uh, to the channel. We have over 50 vids uh, of similar sort of things for PlayStations, Xboxes, uh, MacBooks, things like that. More of that to come as well. So uh, thank you, and I will see you on the next vid. Many thanks for watching then, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then why not check out these recommendations below. Also, please remember to comment, rate, and, of course, subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. We've plenty more content on there, and there's lots more to come.